All right, update on project patches. All right, so I've got the body off, as anybody, anybody can see. The body's off the frame. Now what I've managed to do is I managed to take all the brake lines off, um, disconnected the uh, parking brake cables, and I cut all the exhaust and everything out from underneath the, the frame. So what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to put in a hell wig uh, frame stiffening or support kit. And this is kind of what it looks like here. It's got a bunch of little pieces that you go in there and you weld it in. You're boxing the frame in to stiffen it up right along in this gap here. So what we're end up doing is taking this cross member out here and then this piece will end up cutting out. And I'm gonna sandblast this entire area, everything on the insides, on this side too. And then I've got some galvanized spray you can buy from Lowe's. I'm gonna galvanize the inside of that bad boy to try to keep any rust from happening again. And then I'm gonna mock up the pieces and tack them in. Now, what did I do to get to this point? So. What I ended up doing was I put a level, I've jacked up the frame on four corners, as you can see there and there. And then I grabbed a level like so. And I tried to get these things fairly close. You know, I put it in here fairly close, get it leveled out, you know. So I come in here and I put a level across that thing, get this level that way, spin it around get this thing level this way. And then I found that this cross member, when I try to get it fairly level this way, and then you come up here to the, with the main cross member where the engine goes, and you put it right along these bends here, you know, and get it, get it pretty close. So that's what I did is I jacked this thing up. I got it leveled out pretty close. Um, and then I went and bought some of this iron and I tacked it into place. As you can see, I tacked it into place and a couple up here and on the sides, just to kind of keep the frame from flexing. I don't want the frame to flex any. And then what I did was I took a tape measure and I measured from this point to that point, from this point to this point from that point right there, all the way across to this point right here. All six body mount points, I measured those. Then I measured diagonally from there to here, and from there to here. And I wrote all those measurements down and how they pertain to the chassis and all that. And then I drew me a little diagram and then I wrote it all down. That way I can check and double check as I'm welding this frame that way I can check and make sure that my body mount measurements are going to stay the same. Um, this cross member is going to be deleted out and I'm going to have to weld it or something. I'm going to have to figure something out with putting it in here. They make an aftermarket cross member, but I think I can use this one. Um, but you keep your measurements right from these points. And then as you weld this Hellwig kit in, which I'll make another video on how to do that, you want to weld a little bit, maybe an inch, and then come down to this corner, weld like an inch, weld like an inch down here, weld like an inch over there, and then a little bit, you know, back and forward in that pattern, top and bottom. That way you're not just putting a lot of heat in one area and distorting the chassis, because even though this is a car chassis, it's really kind of fairly thin. I mean, you're looking at maybe eighth inch steel. Um, it's fairly thin. So if you start really putting the heat to her ass, you will warp that chassis. So you weld it in those various areas. That gives each little area its own little few minutes to cool down before you start welding into a new area. And then once you get you, I don't know, five, four or five beads, one inch beads on the top and the bottom, you can pretty much go ahead and burn it in because at that point it'll be pretty, pretty stiff and rigid. Um, I'm gonna sandblast this entire chassis. I'm gonna take this whole front end apart because all that's going away anyway. 
Um, all this back here is going away anyway. So there was a bunch of like extra um, pieces here for like factory exhaust hangers and all that stuff. I cut all that mess out because I don't need it. Um, all this is getting changed into aftermarket uh, upper control arms and aftermarket lowers. That spring is going away. That air shock is going away and there's going to be a coilover to replace this on, on this side as well. And there will be coil coilovers in the front. So those front springs and shocks will go away. And I'm contemplating on putting a set of tubular A arms in the thing with two inch drop spindles in the front to get this thing down real nice and low. As you can see though, the rear end, this is a factory width the rear end. This is a eight inch wheel. So you actually can put a 20 by 10 inch rim on this thing. And I think that the adjustable, uh, I mean, the coilover, I believe it has a kit that moves that coilover bolt location over about an inch or so. So you can put actually put a 20 by 10 inch rim in here and you'll have plenty of room between the chassis and the frame. Now, if you want to cut the, cut the um, rear end to get that deep dish look wheel in there, I mean, that's, that's up to you, but I'm really contemplating on just leaving the rear end as is. Uh, width-wise and then cut it uh i mean uh not to cut it but to move that over and then backspace my wheels appropriately um but I, I i'm debating that i really like that deep dish wheel look that cutting the rear end would give me um another thing about these chevy rear ends you gotta this is a 12 bolt as anybody can see it's a gm passenger guard 12 bolt and you can see that it's got axle tubes you need to weld these like an 8.8 .8 on a mustang you need to weld those bad boys up so they don't have a whole lot of flex to them. So I'll be doing all that. And I'm gonna put a cuddle carrier here. That's gonna, uh, that has the, the pressure bolts for the main caps inside the rear end. And I'm gonna eliminate, eliminate the C-clips in the hog's head by putting eliminators on the outside, the four nine inch eliminators and uh, disc brakes. So this car is gonna be completely boxed in. And another thing I'm gonna do that I'm gonna tell you guys about is I, I'm, I'm a big fan of gusseting. I've, I've never really understood. I've seen a bunch of older guys gusset stuff. I never really understood why. But I bought this steel. And anywhere that there is a 90 or so degree bend, maybe, you know, that's like 120 or something. But anywhere there's a, like a 90 degree bend, I'm going to put a gusset in there and weld that gusset in. That way, that stiffens this frame up even more. And you can come in here and gusset that, box that in if you wanted to. You don't really need to box the back end up, but I'm gonna put 90 degree gussets all where, you know, anywhere that there's a 90 degree, like right there, I'm gonna weld a gusset into that frame, weld a gusset here. Um, and I'm using eighth inch, eighth inch steel because it's little, 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 about five to 10 thousandths variance between the chassis thickness and the steel. But as you can see right here, that's a hard 90. Um, that's a point of cracking. And that, that I mean, I'm, does it crack? I don't know. Um, I would, I hate, it. I think it would with enough power and enough, that's why I'm boxing the frame in, is to limit that chassis twist. But if you weld a gusset in here, maybe one down here too, that really stiffens that frame up to up here. Same thing up here in both these corners. Weld your gusset up in there. Um, it don't have to be nothing crazy, but a gusset really distributes the weight along the rest of the metal and it does a very good job of stiffening the rear end up. Um, also, when you have these lower control arms, you see, you can see kind of here from the factory, they're kind of got some doo-doo kind of stuff going on here. I'm going to re-weld that in tight and I might even weld it back in here to stiffen this up some, thicken it up some, help it out. Um, We've got this stiffening brace here to keep this in place, which is good. Um, but you still kind of need to try to beef it up wherever there's a mounting point that shifts. And those lower control arms, you know, control the the lower, uh, like like the bottom of a four link more or less, like or, on, or like the lower control arm on a Mustang. It's all about the same stuff. So you've got to really kind of beef it up. And the same thing with the uppers. Your upper control arm mounting pads on these rear ends, I mean, I'm gonna show on these chassis are uh, kind of flimsy. Um, as you can kind of see them 
here. See, that's kind of flimsy. That's strong because it's, you know, formed into the steel. So that's probably stronger than hell. But this piece coming out here could really use a beef up. So I'm gonna beef this up as well. Um, these are going away because I want to be able to adjust the pinion angle with the upper control arm. And this bump stop will probably go away. But anyway, see like right here is a 90 degree. That'd be a good place to gusset here um, to help strengthen this chassis up. But once you weld in the box in frame kit, you put those gussets in those few places that there's 90 degrees, say there and there and here, um, and maybe even like back in here somewhere. And you start putting some 90s in there. Uh, this this chassis will perform like a like a Corvette chassis almost. It will have plenty of stiffness and won't flex as much, especially if you solid that cross member in there. So you set your, your motor your transmission in there with the box and frame kit, you're not gonna be able to mount it with the, with the bolts. So you'll probably have to weld it into place or make you cut it, make you a um, bracket and then bolt it through the bracket. You could do that, that would work. But either way, you're gonna have to remove this cross member. But once you put that cross member in there solid with that, with that box and frame kit, this thing would be stiff. And if you use polyurethane bushing mounts, um, body mounts, like here and back here and up in here, if you use the polyurethane, that the car will feel like a Corvette, especially if it's low enough. And I want to do three inch drops all year around with some wide tires um, to really give this thing a really bitching look. But on top, it'll be really perform well in the street, driving it every day. It'll respond very well to bends and twists and curves and power acceleration and stuff like that. I mean, when you're talking about a 496 big block and uh, that bad boy is going to have some torque and it will really flex it when these chassis and I, I wish I could have shown you how much the chassis actually flex as I was putting the jack stands under them. You put the jack stands under them and the, you could see the body flexing so much and you just imagine what six or seven hundred foot pounds of torque can do. So anyway, that concludes this video of the chassis. Now I will be doing a video on the installation of the Hellwig kit. Um, and I will go step by step on what I did to make that happen. And then, uh, you know, but just remember guys, when you're doing your frames like these, you need to make sure that the frame is level and that it's a level this way and this way to try to get it as true as possible to the floor. And, you know, and weld you some braces in there. This, these were, these little pieces of metal were fairly inexpensive. I think they were like $12. And you can reuse them again and again and again to beef up the frames. But it's good to put this little piece of metal across there because that little bit of metal welded in those little spaces just tacked in there will keep this thing from shifting around under heat. Even though we do it, like I said, with the cross pattern, when you weld an inch or so there, bead, an inch or so here, bead, back here, and you do it like that for four or five beads. Even if you do that, the chassis is still flex. So if you weld this piece in there, just remember, Take as many, take all the time you need and do as many precautions as you can to try to keep flex from happening. And if you do that, you'll have a good result at the end. So uh, anyway, that concludes this video, guys. I will be doing one on the Hellwig kit, how to install it, what I did. Um, and then we'll go through the instructions, the Hellwig instructions, one frame at a time. So you guys can get to doing this. It's very simple. As long as you can weld and you can, you don't mind getting dirty, you can make this thing, you can make this car bitching as far as handling and all that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you like this project. Um, and there's plenty more information coming along. Um, so like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.